Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial showing you how to create something uh, similar to this uh, using a vertex map and some other basic techniques to uh, kind of incorporate this noise into the image. So uh, uh, let's get started. So I already have open my, my scene template which includes a sphere and some basic three-point lighting uh, as well as a camera. So if we drill into the camera uh, I'm going to take my sphere, first of all, and make it editable. That's uh, needed for the vertex mapping. And uh, you, you don't need a high poly count because we're going to end up putting this into a subsurface, or subdivision, I'm sorry. All right, so when in point mode here, go up to character and paint tool. And we're going to make sure the opacity in this case is up to 100%. We're going to set the mode to uh, to add, and uh, you can you can play around with the the radius here. Uh, but let's just let's make a line like this, similar to the example that I have. I'm trying to hit a couple of extra points here to make sure that I'm covering enough area. Let's grab that one as well, and this one. Okay. Now that you've got this map essentially created, I'm going to come over here and go to the smooth mode. I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit and then do apply all. Now when I click apply all, watch how this smooths out here. Okay. So it smooths it out some, but you can, st you can still see how it's a little bit jagged. However, if we come and grab a uh, subdivision surface and put the sphere into that, When we click back here on the the vertex map, you'll see now how it it uh, has smoothed out that map as well. Uh, so for now, though, we can turn that off. So if we go uh, back into modeling mode, and uh, uh, for demonstration purposes, or actually, what I would what I would do in my normal workflow is I'm going to turn on the interactive render region so we can get real time updates of what's happening. Um, my quality slider here was already all the way up to the top, so I'll leave it there. And you can see already on the sphere there's some jaggies there, but uh, clearly when we turn on the subdivision surface it's going to smooth those out. So let me double click here, open up a new material. And here's where it really gets easy. We're only going to be using a couple of different uh, channels here, the color channel and reflectance. And we'll deal with reflectance in a bit. But for the color channel, let me uh, add a layer. And for the first layer, first shader, we're going to do a color. And let's just make that red. Next, let's add a, let's see, it's under effects, vertex map. And for the vertex map, uh, we need to change this to layer mask. Change the order. And finally, let's add some noise. And I think in this case, yeah, let's go with this Luca. Now, if we apply this to the sphere, uh, we see immediately that it's it's nothing but the nothing but the uh, Luca. Now, there's a reason for that. The noise has to go below the vertex map. All right, now's the time in life when I troubleshoot. Oh, it's always something simple, isn't it? So within the vertex map, we need to actually drag the vertex map in here so it knows what it's looking for. And when this refreshes, we see uh, it's, it's the opposite of what we want. So let's click on invert here. And 
there it is basically but uh, you can go in here and you can you can play around with uh, with the noise with the color let's say for example we want it to be um, black and uh, you know a darker shade of red that's not quite what I want but uh, let's go a little bit lighter all right I kind of like that but what 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 I'd like to see is a little bit larger area here. So uh, let's see if we go back to the let me turn off the render region. If we go to the vertex map, and I change this back to add, and we go to point mode over here. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. We can expand the size of that vertex map. And let's see how this looks now. One more change here. I'm going to stay in add and I'm going to come over here a little bit more and just fill in everything because remember we had smoothed it. That kind of uh, diffused the diffuse the uh, intensity of that map so I essentially was bringing that all back to life and then I'm going to come back to here to smooth bring this down again apply all a couple of times and that should do it that'll be good enough I think all right now we need some sort of environment to add reflection here so I'm going to go to my old standby um, you can use any sort of HDR map technique that you like. Um, that could be as simple as adding a sky object and throwing a photo on there. Um, tech, you know, really you don't even need to use a full HD, HDR photo. You could use um, um, anything depending on how detailed you want the reflections to be. Uh, but I'm going to use SIBL Loader um, and I do have another tutorial that outlines this this tool. It's free and I use it on just about everything that I do. So if we open this up uh, let's see, I think the one that I used for uh, the example was this, yeah, this dirt road one. So we just click on it. Um, we, we, I want to exclude some of these options. I don't want to use its uh, global illumination. I do want to see the background. I want to load the environment and the reflection. Uh, in this case, because I've got three point lighting already set up and it's such a simple scene with no real shadows or anything. Uh, I'm not going to create the sun. I'm not going to create any other lights. If this template has other lights, I'm just saying don't load those. And I definitely don't want to turn off the existing lights that I have in my scene. So I'll check that, uncheck that. When we do apply preset, now we'll see that scene comes up in the background. Uh, now if we take, uh, let's see. If we go into rotation mode, I want to turn this a little bit just so that we can just so we can get a, a different background. A little bit more. Yeah, I think that'll do. So now the only th uh, thing remaining is, is to add some reflection here. So typically, again, in just about everything I do, I remove the default specular. I'll add a GGX. And I think what most people do, myself included, a lot of the times is we go down into the layer Fresnel and we add uh, Fresnel here. You can also, and I, and I, I heard, I don't obviously know, you know, uh, if the program, if this is true, uh, based on the specs of the program, but I've heard that if you add Fresnel in here, it's a little bit less resource intensive. Um, not sure. One of those things I've latched onto though. So if we just go to Fresnel, you'll see it does its thing. So. 
so now if we go to uh, render settings, if I turn this off actually, <clears throat> actually, I'm already drilled into my camera, but I want to zoom in here so we get a better shot. Let's see how the whole thing looks. There you go. You know, I guess realistically, I don't really have to waste your time on render settings. Um, I prefer for still images to use physical um, uh, with settings cranked up, right? Because it's only one image as opposed to a video scene. Uh, so if it takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes to render out something beautiful, that's cool. But uh, uh, anyways, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you picked something up. Uh, if you heard me say anything that's, that's inaccurate or if there's a better way to do things, please do drop a note. Uh, if you like these tutorials, it would be great if you could subscribe and like, um, help YouTube direct more people to my channel. Thanks again. Bye.